All right, welcome back to another episode of Cappy Shows You How to Use His Mortar Calculator. All right, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and open up the mortar calculator. Uh, I was looking at some videos earlier. Let me go ahead and open up the mortar calculator here by double-clicking on it. You can see now in the upper right-hand corner of my screen, sorry, left-hand corner, <laughs> Uh, there is a little bug up at the top that has some text inside of it. First things first, a uh, new feature to the mortar calculator is if you hit the F11 key, it will give you a list of all the different hotkeys that you can use to play the game, <coughs> or rather to use the calculator. Uh, first thing that we need to do whenever we start using the calculator is to set our home position and the type of mortar that we want to use. So let me demonstrate that. I'm going to get in the mortar itself and I'm gonna bring up my map. Now, initially your map will start zoomed out as possible like you see here, but sometimes you may find yourself in a zoomed in state like this. You really wanna zoom your map all the way out when you set your mortar position, and here's why. If you look around the edges of the map as I move my mouse, this little set of numbers right here does not change. But when I get my mouse on the map, it does. However, if you are zoomed in, you will notice that wherever I'm moving my mouse on the screen right now, it is changing the mouse position. So we can only reliably extract the position of the mortar if we have zoomed all the way out from that location. So I'm going to go ahead and hit home to go ahead and extract my position. It has correctly extracted the position right here, K322. Um, so that has been successful. <clears throat> now I'm going to set my mortar type by hitting page up and I'm using a, a, a British heavy mortar so it's a four inch mortar I'm going to use heavy mortar as my selection. If I was using some other type of mortar like a three inch or uh, an 8 cm mortar I would use light or medium mortar for that purpose. <clears throat> but I'm using heavy so that's what I want. As you've seen most likely before, if you've watched my previous video, if you zoom in on the map and start hitting the F4 key, you will start to generate targets on your screen. So as I'm successively hitting the F4 key, it is extracting positional information, hopefully from the screen. And just as I did that, it had an error. It could not correctly extract the positions like you see here, 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 and here. And instead, it's looking at this number, and it couldn't figure out exactly what it said. It pulled the 8 and the 7 out, but it couldn't figure out that first K6 part. So I'm going to help it out by typing in K6 at the start of that string and hitting OK. And there's a little bit of an error that it doesn't show the updated value, but it did correctly calculate the uh, mortar firing to that location, and it also shows the dispersion factors that go along with this. So this is what we've seen before in the previous video. If you're not quite up to speed with that, go look at the previous version. What I want to do though is I want to show you a new feature to the mortar calculator that we've not yet seen. So let me explain this by saying <clears throat> we will frequently want to create what I like to call mortar screens or firing in a line or firing in particular patterns to try to get better effect on targets. Let's say that this set of buildings right here is our objective, and my infantry is coming from this direction, and their infantry is coming from this direction. I really want to try to cut off their infantry and cause casualties before they can get to the point. That's going to give my guys a better chance to get on that point. So it would be extremely effective if I could somehow put a screen of mortars that these guys would have to run through, a line of mortars they'd have to run through, or maybe even a checkerboard pattern going back towards where I think their spawns might be to hit enemies as they're running towards that particular location. Well, we could do that by using the F4 key, you know, using F5 to clear our slate, and then F4 to solve for some different targets along the way, but it's very difficult to understand what these different targets mean. So I have created a new and different way of doing exactly that sort of mortar screening, and that's what I'm going to call mortar by line. So if I hold the control key, you'll see immediately that it wipes my slate of targets. But if I click on the map, it generates a single point on the map, which now has a line emanating from it. What we're essentially doing now is we're going to paint targets onto the map. This is my first target in the center of that square. Here's my next target. Here's another target, a fourth, 
a fifth, and maybe even a sixth. So I've created this semicircle of targets around the back side of that cap to, to catch those people as they're coming into that capture point. If I want to end my target set, I just release control. And the cool thing is it takes a picture of what that target set looked like and imports it as a thumbnail over here. So you get a clear visual of what your set pattern looked like. Now I will say this, the character recognition that we use down here is not as robust in this version because it doesn't have the opportunity to cue you that hey, I, I, I can't really read that particular location. So sometimes you might see some errored targets in the list, which is why I've included these target locations here as the first bit of data. But these represent the mill angles that we'd have to raise our mortar to in order to hit these different targets. And here are the actual left-right dispersion angles to hit those targets. And of course, look, they're labeled one, two, three, four, five. There's an infinite number that you could create, it's just they will spill off the screen. I haven't made them wrap at this point. So logically, there's probably about 12 targets you can get at any one given time. But trust me, that's kind of inter informational mortar, uh, mortar load, overload, if you're going that far. Probably about six, six to nine targets is what I find is pretty good. If you're trying to saturate a point rather than doing just point fire, you could also do something like this. You could do a cross pattern across a target like this where you're adding some different fire at different locations. You're not just hitting, say for example here, but you're kind of hitting that target all the way across. and It will generate those targets as well. Uh, for the demonstration purposes, I do want to show that there are a couple of competing factors that you need to think about when you're selecting your targets with this tool. First off, it's that uh, the mortar calculator itself doesn't have perfect resolution. And what I mean by that is if you want to try to hit a couple of points on this road, for example, you're going to have some difficulties because these little boxes represent the absolute resolution of the mortar calculator itself. So if I want to hit this target, target one right there in that box, it's going to default to the center of that box. I can't hit the sides of that box. It's going to default to the center. So you got to think about that when you're setting your targets. It's going to snap to the centers of these little boxes. So it's best to kind of just plan for your targets in that fashion, but I do want to show you just a two target simple targeting solution like this. So we should have one that's right on the road and we should have one that's slightly to the right of the road if I use this set of targets. Here's my, my mill values, here are my angle values. Now when I get in my mortar <clears throat> and I look towards my first target which is 203, sorry my, uh, my computer is lagging for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, but 203 is right about here. You can see that's pointed towards that set of buildings over there. That's not pointed towards the road, which would be more around 200, which is odd. And so this, this brings us to another issue with the game currently. And that is that the locations that you see displayed down here are not actual to what is happening on the map. And you can see that. If I attempt to mark a target on the map, do you notice how when I'm right-clicking to mark a target, it is not putting that, that mark exactly where I'm clicking on the map. It's, it's putting it a little bit lower and to the right, at least when I'm zoomed in. And depending on where I'm at, it'll be more or less accurate as to where that is. That, that bug eventually will go away, but currently understand that it is negatively affecting the accuracy of the mortar calculator. And so one of the ways in which you can kind of get around that a little bit is to plan ahead with your targeting so that you can effectively kind of counteract that uh, tendency. So you saw that it wanted to try to aim a little bit towards this direction uh, when we set our initial points. So I'm going to counteract that by looking at the squares or putting squares. I want to have a fire mission that's on the road so I'm going to go to the squares that are like one over and put a fire mission on those squares with the hope that it'll kind of shift them over onto that roadway. So let's try this fire mission right here. Let's see if we can't put some mortars on that road. Oh, and it actually had an issue. So this is what I was talking about, where sometimes it cannot find that particular value. Uh, it can't grasp it off of the screen. Um, and so it will give us an errored value like you see here with a zeroed out value for our actual target. That's fine. We'll just do 
targets one, three, and four and see if they actually hit the roadway. So I'll pull down my map. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to aim at my first target. And my first target, its elevation is 1512. I'm going to increase the speed of my mouse. That's what that little bug that you see in the corner is. That is the increase of my speed of my mouse. Oh, there goes my frame rate. Comes right back up. wonder what that was about. Uh, I'm going to go to 1512. And there it tanked again, unfortunately. I think it's probably processing in the background. Um, 197 would be right about here. Now you can see, hey, 197 looks like it's on the road. So this looks like it's probably a good target. So I'm going to go ahead and release that target. Then I'm going to go to 1499, which is right about here. And then I was at 199 for that one, and I will release there. Now it looks like I duplicated that same for the, the fourth, again, because of the, the map bug. So I'm going to go ahead and pop off of my mortar. And again, low frame rate because something's going on in the background. And pull open my... Come on, give me my binos. Use my binos to look at that particular section of roadway. I think that's about where we were targeting, right there. So let's see if in a few seconds we get some mortars. And there we go. There's our first hit. Very close to that road. Keeping in mind there's natural dispersion. Little one, the next one should go a little bit further. Yep, and it's almost exactly on the road, as you see. So there's a little bit of planning that goes along with trying to get these onto the target that you're going to have to think about. And then you also really need to think about, oh, hey, how can I use these to create the sorts of screens that Cappy was talking about? Like, say, for example, your infantry is coming this direction towards Hotel Switzerland. Uh, and you know that there's a friendly spawn that's going to be pointed here. They're going to come in from this direction. But you know that typically there's an enemy spawn right down here. And they're going to try to be in this location. So what I might do to do some like danger close calls is I might do a mortar pattern around here that would look something like this to try to get as many of those folks in that location as possible as I work through those targets on a cycle, or uh, let's take a different target <clears throat> as an example. Typically there's a warehouse here that they're trying to, to hold at a different location. And they'll typically they'll have a spawn that comes down this road, they'll run down this road, or maybe even from this house into that point, or sometimes they'll come from these woods. So we know that we want to kind of block off this back end. So again, I would try to do a mortar screen that tries my best to prevent them from getting into the back side of that warehouse while my guys assault from the front. So you're going to think about what tactics work best for you and in ways that will do area denial. You might not get a lot of kills, but you're going to prevent those guys from getting onto the actual um, locations that they want to be. It's just an area denial tactic. So again, if you hit F11, you'll have a full list of all the different keys and things that you can do within the program. Uh, you've seen some of the errors that can occur within this particular video. And of course, you can look at the previous video on how to, how to best utilize the F4 and F5 function. And as I do that, it actually errors out and couldn't find that position right there. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. You should be able to find this on GitHub, this updated version on GitHub. And I hope you make best use of it.